Hey guys, it's Andy Sloan here from Weymouth Fitness Camp. So today's presentation is telling you how to lose your legs and <clears throat> ass, basically. Okay, so this could well be you. Um, now, I know we're talking predominantly about sort of legs and ass, but you'll see how the typical apple shape is actually intertwined here as well. Um, so what we're going to cover today is is actually going to be talking about the um, the leg and ass situation and also the uh, the tummy situation, particularly in females sort of post menopausal. Okay. Um, in addition to that, you guys can listen as well. So any guys out there with a bit of a, a man boob situation and even sort of like the the uh, love handles as well, it's uh, all this stuff is uh, is actually relevant for you as well. Okay, so when we're talking about the, the sort of typical pear shape and the, the apple shape in the um, sort of postmenopausal women in particular, as well as the, the man boob situation here, um, is this sort of thing going to work? Uh, in, in answer to sort of a lot of the questions that I, I get, quite, get quite a lot of time about sort of cardio and, and um, whether that's going to use work to, to get rid of the pear shape, get rid of the apple shape, the man boobs, whatever. Um, to an extent, it may well do for a while, um, but it's not the answer in terms of getting the results that you're looking for um, and certainly getting sustained kind of lasting results, um, which you're, you're actually sort of going to continue to get. <clears throat> um, so cardio ain't the answer in the same way that um, sit-ups aren't the answer to uh, to a flatter stomach. Okay. Now, what a lot of it comes down to um, is the hormone estrogen when we're talking about pear shape, apple shape, and man boobs. Okay, estrogen, and the uh, basically the presentation is, is going to be looking in particular at that hormone um, and the the effect it's going to have on your body if we've got too much of it, um, and then sort of what it, what it is that we need to do in order to. Um, actually kind of counteract it and make sure that you you can actually um, enable your body to release the fat from these from the stores uh, that, that are giving you the, the, the legs and arse basically. <clears throat> okay so just very quickly what is estrogen? Um, basically it's derived from the, the Greek word meaning mad with desire um, interestingly enough. Uh, you, you all, I'm sure, know it's pr the, predominantly the, the, the female sex hormone although us guys do have it as well. Um, it kind of helps regulate the basic female uh, biological functions, um, from like the menstrual cycle, pregnancy, and, and all those sorts of girly things. Um, it actually, you know, you, you'll know yourselves again, but it, it, it will turn girls into women. So as um, as sort of girls are developing, estrogen is, is, is the thing sort of um, helping develop their shape as, as they uh, get a bit older. Um, and as we've got there, yeah, the female body shape basically is, is um, a lot of it down to estrogen. Um, and the, the weight kind of shifting toward the lower body, which is why, um, you know, the majority of women have kind of got... Um, a big, bigger arse and legs, basically, than, than a lot of guys. Um, in addition to that, it's actually responsible for bone health as well, or certainly partly responsible for, for bone health. Okay, so basically, there, there are there's a, bit, a bit of a misconception with estrogen, really, um, because there's actually three three sort of types of it, um, and each one is kind of does different things and is important for different things. Um, this the top one there, estradiol, is actually produced by the ovary, and is actually pre dom the the predominant estrogen in in younger women. Um, now this this estrogen actually promotes fat storage around the hips and ass. Okay, now. This is actually healthy. Um, it, it's, you know, believe it or not, it's actually healthy to to have a little bit of extra fat around around the, your, your hips and arse. Um, however, what's not healthy is having an excess. Okay, so having too much around there. Um, so basically, that having the fat distribution around the sort of legs and bum actually can sort of improve your insulin and, and blood sugar levels. Um, and this estradiol is actually kind of known as the, the good insulin um, when you compare it to the next one anyway. Um, the next one is estrone, uh, which is actually produced by fat, believe it or not. And this one actually promotes fat storage around your belly and the organs as well. So this is kind of the, the, the bad estrogen, if you like. Now, young women have actually got uh, sort of lower levels of this because um, basically their body can easily convert this estrone into the estradiol so that so the top one there now 
after menopause, basically your, your ovaries kind of lose the ability to, um, to to do this, which then leads to you developing this apple shape. Okay, so a lot of women sort of postmenopausal, their their weight, their, their sort of body fat stories will shift from being from the the arse and legs, and will actually go up to the belly and give a kind of big kind of bloated belly looking uh, looking thing on there as well. Um, and this is the really dangerous fat, the belly fat, and you know it's really closely linked to things like coronary heart disease. Um, and, and one of the biggies, of course, is, is diabetes and the, the insulin resistance factor there as well. Um, the, the third one there is estriol, um, which is produced by the placenta during your pregnancy um, and, and made from, it's actually made from other types of estrogen, estrogen sorry. <clears throat> but we're, we're not really too concerned with that, to be honest, today. Okay, there's also these things called xenoestrogens. Okay, now these these are kind of one of the main things that are actually going to be causing this uh, fat distribution in the places you don't want it to be, um, and they're actually environmental estrogens. Then, okay, these are actually chemical compounds which have actually got a similar structure to estrogen. Okay, and what they actually do is they actually kind of mimic the effects of estrogen. Okay, and they end up interfering with your hormonal balance, which is a bit of a bummer because these things here can actually turn on the the estrogen receptor now these things are pretty much bloody everywhere um, coming from things like your like like um, plastics so even from um, sort of low quality plastic bottles like water bottles or things like that um, we're looking at um, plastics coming off from uh, excuse me uh, like Tupperware containers and things like that, we're getting uh, chemicals like including sort of pesticides and herbicides and all those sorts of things. Additives, so the things that get added into your foods have all got these xen or a lot of them have got these xenoestrogens in there. Um, detergents, the linings of cans, so like your um, you know your, uh, your can of tomatoes or something or can of tuna. You know this is one of the reasons I don't allow any canned food on the uh, sort of hit and miss diet. Um, is the actual sort of estrogens can actually kind of, or xenoestrogens, sorry, can actually kind of seep into your food there. Um, some tooth thinnings as well. And and then one of the biggies as well is non-organic foods. I mean, if if, um, if you think about it, if someone, if a farmer is spraying their crops with chemicals and these chemicals have got these xenoestrogens in there, they then go into the ground. The cow then eats the, um, eats the grass, okay? Uh, the xenoestrogens then go into the cow, and guess who eats the cow? Um, me, predominantly, uh, and, and, and you as well. Okay, so it, it's in the food, basically, it's in a lot of our food. So that's another reason why, kind of, um, I always do try and recommend organic sources of food when we're talking about sort of really maximizing your uh, your benefits on the hit and miss diet. <clears throat> okay, so with regard to um, estrogen levels and female metabolism, uh, we've already kind of kind of touched on this <clears throat> but basically it's there's a couple of different vicious cycles in there um, as with a lot of things hormone related um, and we have touched on this already as I said but basically as you sort of prepare to go through the menopause your, your ovaries actually start to shut down um, and your production of this estradiol decreases remember the estradiol is the one that was, is responsible for fat storage around the, the legs and arse the kind of healthy fat storage there <clears throat> basically your um when that happens estrone remember that's the one re responsible for the belly fat that actually kind of becomes your your main estrogen and, and and that's not really too great so what happens there is that that estrone actually immediately starts shifting fat away from your ass and your hips and onto your belly um now as you as you lose more of your ovarian estrogen so the estradiol there you, your body actually kind of comes a bit desperate to sort of um hang on to the estrogen, uh, the estrogen making areas of, of your body, um, including the fat, because you know we've already spoke about um, some of the estrogen actually getting uh, sort of made in the fat, which actually makes it harder for, harder for you to lose that belly fat, okay, because it's, it's kind of trying to hold on to it. Now, the more fat that, fat you have, the more estrogen you'll produce, okay, because um, your fat tissue actually bur sorry, turns the fat turning androgens uh, into this fat storing est uh, estrone, which which isn't what you good, what you want. So it's it's kind of that vicious cycle there. Okay, now another vicious cycle that you've got in there. Oops, excuse me. Another one you got in there is the fact that um, to do with insulin. Basically, insulin actually increases your, your circulating circulating levels of estrogen, um, and estrone remember that one of the types of estrogen actually causes insulin resistance okay so that's another little vicious cycle so you you kind of um 
insulin's actually increasing the sort of um, circulating levels of the estrogen, and because of this, the sorry within that as well, the, the estrone there is is causing the insulin resistance as well. So again, it's just another kind of vicious circle, which um, again, in, in one of those things that you really want. <clears throat> now, don't feel like I've left you out, fellas, um, because this stuff does does affect you as well. Now, obviously, we got far less than women. Okay, you know, some guys have have, have more than other guys, but we got far less than women. Uh, basically, with 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 us guys, it's produced in your in your in your balls. Excuse me, and I hate the word testes. It's produced there and and your adrenals as well. Um, now, when you your estrogen levels are at a, a normal level. Um, it can actually protect your brain, your heart, your bones, and actually, you know, help you maintain a healthy libido as well, which is which is a good thing, of course. Um, now, your estrogen levels will naturally increase as we age, but if you've got too much, then then that's when we sort of um, start getting problems. So when they're actually out of balance and you've got too much, then us guys we can. <clears throat> We can kind of lose our muscle building advantage that, that we've got over the girls, you know, because as it is, we've uh, hormonally we're we're much better at putting on muscle than than than, than the girls. But um, when our when when our when we're getting too much estrogen levels, basically when when they're too high, we are actually kind of going to start losing this advantage, which isn't isn't what you want, okay? Especially when you're talking about getting in shape. Um, in addition to this, we we kind of start turning into girls as well, um, which again is, is isn't what you want, um, and that's why you you'll see with with guys who are sort of a bit more estrogen dominant, you'll find that they're actually got man boobs and love handles, okay? Because we're starting to store fat in the, a couple of the places that the that, that girls kind of start that are generally storing their fat as well, okay? Which again isn't what we want. We're guys. <laughs> um, Okay, so we'll just have a little look about sort of how your estrogen levels actually get messed up. Um, now, basically, what one of the in you know, a few sort of studies, in fact, have, have actually kind of shown that um, excessive estrogen levels within within um, the body at the minute, um, and just in our lifestyles in general, sort of coming from all these xenoestrogens and and all these other kind of angles. All these, um, all this increases in, in in estrogen is actually kind of leading to girls developing earlier. So I'm every every you know every year, and that people are um, you know, girls are basically starting to develop a bit earlier. Okay, so they're so they you know they're they're starting developing their um, womanly shapes. Okay, we'll call it a little bit earlier on than they were, say you know 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, and a lot of that has kind of been linked to these increases in estrogens and the xenoestrogens in particular within our diet, but also in environment as well. Um, <clears throat> with regard to us guys, um, oh excuse me, yeah, with, with, with regard to guys, this is kind of um, displaying itself within kind of decreased sperm counts, infertility, um, and actually increased prevalence of prostate cancer as well, um, which is all kind of linked to these increases in estrogen as well. Now, as we said, a lot of this is down to the xenoestrogen, so the stuff, the synthetic estrogens, which we're getting from chemicals, preservative, plastics, all those sorts of things, okay? Um, in addition to that, stress, stress, we hate stress, well, the bad stress anyway, it's, it's one of those other things which is actually causing our estrogen levels to get bulged up, okay? Another thing is a lack of quality fats and proteins in your diet, eating refined grains, okay? So, you know, your, 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 your pastas, your white rices, your, your, um, your couscous, all those sorts of things, your uh, breads and all that sort of horrible stuff. Processed foods are another one, you know, it, in there, that's when you're going to have a load of those xenoestrogens in particular. Now, what all these things are actually causing is for a lot of people to actually become estrogen dominant, okay? So basically that means that we end up storing too much fat in the legs and the arse. Um, if you're a woman and you're a little bit older, you'll then start storing a little bit more in your belly and, and us guys will be storing in our in our man boobs and, and the love handles as well, Okay. Oh, the little um, animation came out. I didn't think I was going to. Brilliant. So, here's my, my little drum roll. The answer is as follows. Okay. So, basically, I've got kind of a five-pronged attack for this um, in terms of how you target the, the fruity shape with your nutrition. So, here we're talking about the pear shape and the apple shape. But, but guys, we're talking about the, the move situation a bit here as well. 
Um, so basically, that the first thing that we need to consider is actually taking on board some anti-estrogenic foods. <clears throat> so foods that are actually going to kind of counteract the um, the estrogen. Okay. Um, the next thing we need to do is actually promote these. Uh, well, promote an anti-estrogenic hormonal effect. Okay. So the hormones that actually are anti-estrogen, we want to get those um, firing on all cylinders. Third up, we actually want to kind of um, make sure we're getting on board food, foods that are actually working as cofactors and kind of helping things along. There's a little couple of little things we can do sort of supplementation wise as well, which can help with these things. Um, and then there's a, there's a few things to avoid like the plague as well. Okay. So first up, we're looking at your estrogen inhibitors. Now, in particular here, I've just nailed these down to three. No, there's a few other things, but I just nailed these down to the three here. So we're looking at cruciferous vegetables. So like things like bro broccoli, cauliflower, um, sprouts, cabbage, all those sorts of things. Um, basically, <clears throat> these are these are some of the best ones to get on board. Um, one of the active ingredients in here, uh, indole three carbonyl, it's actually called. Um, basically, has a substantial capacity to actually shift estrogen metabolism to actually produce um, more of a beneficial antioxidant and anti-cancerous um, metabolites okay um, which is pretty cool and and, and they actually the, the cruciferous in those actually work as a um, kind of a defense against excess estrogen as well which is good um, citrus fruits are, are another good one to get down your neck as well and then omega-3s as well remember when we're talking omega-3s you want to go for something that's an oil as opposed to something that is a capsule because remember if you're having a capsule there's, you know, there's a bit of a chance that the um, the actual liquid inside there could actually be uh, could actually be rancid uh, in terms of the citrus fruits I mean things like oranges grapefruits um, Lemons and limes are just laden with antioxidants, vitamins and enzymes and, and uh, cofactors, which actually kind of help protect, protect your body from oxygen free radicals. Um, so uh, at the same time, they kind of help lower the overall metabolic stress on your liver. So when we're talking about kind of detoxing your liver, citrus fruits are always a good one to, to get on board as well. Okay, so next up, we want to actually promote anti-estrogenic hormones okay now when we're talking about these we're talking about predominantly progesterone in women and in fellas testosterone okay now a couple of the good ones for this are raw nuts and seeds they're, they're kind of one of the one of the, the key ones here you don't really want to combine these with a the grain or sugar um, because basically they, they work best in a low glycemic index environment okay um, now, nuts and seeds actually kind of help fight against the excess estrogen by actually promoting these at these uh, anti-estrogenic uh, hormones. So it's a really good idea to make sure we're getting those down. You know that uh, you know you, you see in a couple of my videos and that, and on my diet plans, and that I'm, I'm always chucking in nuts and seeds there. And, and again, this is one of the good reasons to to bang them in there. Um, avocados are, uh, are always uh, always a good one to get down your neck as well for for these sorts of benefits. Olives and cold pressed oils as well are another couple to look at there as well. When you're talking cold pressed oils, your you know extra virgin olive oil is always a good one, but um, you you find you really have to kind of spend a little bit more than than you would do normally to actually get a cold pressed oil, and it might even be one that you you actually have to get in a health food shop because a lot of the supermarkets actually don't have some of the the higher quality oils for sure. <clears throat> okay, so. Um, next up is the, the foods that actually work as cofactors, so things that are actually going to help enhance the, uh, the anti-estrogenic effects here as well. Um, and now we're, when we're talking about these, we're talking um, predominantly here about green vegetables as, as one of the key ones. Um, when we're looking at these, they're, they're kind of a, um, certainly green leafy veg, are a, kind of give you a, a big variety of these things called phytonutrients which actually support your hormonal system your enzyme pool and your actually your actual detox power as well um, you got um, the pile of vitamins and minerals in there as well because uh, particular we've got calcium and magnesium in particular in, in your green leafy veg which are again essential for pretty much everything that goes on in your body um, herbs and spices, in particular things like turmeric, uh, oregano, thyme, rosemary, sage, milk thistle, dandelion root and ginger. These are all cofactors which can help enhance the anti-estrogenic effects as well. 
Um, and then we're talking about fruits here. We're looking at the uh, you know things like berries, apples, papaya, pineapple, all the good stuff basically. Um, in particular, it's good to go for the kind of the lower GI stuff here. So again, you know, really looking at the berries, uh, pears are another good one to get down your neck as well. Okay, so fourth up is actually the kind of supplementation thing. I don't really go overboard on this, to be honest, but um, basically this is just to aid everything else. So magnesium, as I said, is necessary for pretty much everything that goes on in your body, in particular uh, with energy production um, within uh, within your body. Um, milk thistle, uh, with regard to how much to take, you just want to follow the label, to be honest with this. Um, because a lot of the different brands and the, the, the different ones out there will actually give you different guidelines. So whichever one you get, I just stick with a stick with a guideline that it gives you on the back. It's probably the simplest thing to do there. Um, these things actually, the, well, the milk thistle and the dandelion root actually sort of help enhance your liver's ability to actually neutralize the excess estrogen. So they're kind of good things to, to be getting down your neck. Ideally, you probably get them down first thing in the morning, to be honest. Um, and then we've got things to avoid like the absolute plague, okay? So here we're talking about alcohol and caffeine. These are kind of things that increase your estrone levels. Remember, estrone is the one that will uh, actually end up giving you belly fat, okay? In particular, when um, sort of post-menopausal if, you, if you're a woman. Um, trans fats, duh. Uh, we all know they're the, they're the devil anyway, so we should. I'm, I'm hoping that you're not eating anything trans fat related as it is at the minute. Um, soy products. Now, these are these are one that you certainly want to um, sort of keep out of your diet as well. So here we're talking about things like um, tofu and, and other other kind of soy soy based products. Um, basically, within these, they've got these things called phytoestrogens, um, which can, like the xenoestrogens can actually mimic estrogen. Um, there's actually been um, quite quite a few studies done in, into this sort of thing with regard to um, oh crap, what's it like? I can't even remember. Maybe might, might, I, can't, I read one not so long. It might have been to do with male sex drive, I think, and and um, and the soy products or something like that. Um, basically, telling us that we're, we're turning into a bunch of girls or some, something along the lines of that. Anyway, um, yams as well are actually another one. Not massively, not, not not a massive amount out there on this to be honest. But um, they're actually said to decrease the metabolism of estrogen, um, which can then actually help to uh, lead to elevated estrone levels again. Okay. So, sorry, I didn't mean to click off that then. So basically, we, I think we're pretty much done in terms of what we need to do. So we'll just have a, a little look over the, the five-pronged attack again. So remember, the anti-estrogenic foods, okay? Promoting the anti-estrogenic hormones. So that was progesterone for you girls and testosterone for the dudes. Um, getting down the foods that are working as cofactors, so things that are going to help uh, point one and two. The supplementation, which is further going to help points one, two, and three. And then number five, which was just staying away from the devil foods, basically. Now, if you crack on with all those things, okay, as well as following, obviously, the guidelines within the hit and miss diet, so no processed food, no dairy, no caffeine, no booze, no uh, wheat, gluten, yeast, all that sort of stuff, then you're going to find that you're rapidly going to be shifting the fat away from your legs and arse. Um, and if you're sort of postmenopausal woman, you'll actually find that you're starting to shift it away from your belly as well. If you're a guy, you'll start finding that your man boobs are, are going to start to drop down as well. And if you're love, suffering with a bit of love handle action, then this is another thing which is going to sort of complement what you'll be doing in terms of um, affecting your, your insulin levels as well. If, if you've already saw the prep scene, the presentation on that. Excuse me. Okay, so look, that's it from me today. Have a fantastic day. It's been a pleasure sharing this with you. Um, and I'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. Take care.